Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming this morning to listen to the talk, The Secret Language of the Victorian Era. And thank you, Mark Donington, for the support, your generous uh, donation for support of the talk. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, let's set the, the era. It's the Victorian era. Victoria was queen in 1938. Victoria's ideas were the ones of most of the British public. Uh, her ideas were very Puritan. Being Puritan meant she was a devout Christian. Uh, she had beliefs in strict Christianity, not just Christianity, but very strict about it, and discipline. Uh, many pictures of her, the portraits show her with her nose turned up as in very much sternness, and she did believe heavily in discipline. Britain at the time was the most prosperous nation in the world. Uh, she had very capable prime ministers, and her prince, of course, guided her in running the country. She uh, fought many wars. Uh, winning control over many nations, countries, and a lot of them still remain under her control today. So as a Victorian woman, what, I'm going to try to answer what, when, where, and how this all came about. So what were women not allowed to do in Victorian times? Well, during this era, uh, symbolized by the reign of the female monarch, monarch Queen Victoria, Women did not have the right to vote, uh, sue, or if they were married, own property. So at the same time, women did participate in a paid workforce in increasing numbers following the Industrial Revolution. And that's when things started to change when they needed us. What were the main ideas, attitudes towards uh, women in the Victorian era? Women in the Victorian society had one main role in life, which was to marry and take part in their husband's interest and business. Before marriage, uh, they would learn housewife skills, such as weaving, cooking, washing, cleaning, unless uh, they were of a wealthy family. What was taboo in Victoria? era? Well, the Victorian era, Queen Victorian's reign, which lasted 1839 to 1901, is still synonymous today with social restraint, or in a more Freudian, Freudian repression. This is the era in which cursing, using swear words, or any reference to sexuality, or really anything distasteful, became taboo in nice society. What was a Victorian wife? Well, she was pure, and she was chaste, refined, modest. The idea was supported by etiquette, manners. The etiquette extended to the pretension of never acknowledging, like, the use of undergarments. In fact, they were sometimes referred to generically as, in this book here on the table, unmentionables. Just didn't talk about stuff like that. What things did the Victorian people fear? Well, it kind of went, uh, followed over to American society today. The anxieties of the Victorian era, uh, as they represented in Rome, Bram Stoker's Dracula book. Um, Victorians became avid readers, and so they had a lot of books. Um, one of them in 1896 was the Complete Bachelor book, Nature of His Intentions. And if they weren't pure, he could get whipped or shot. <laughs> so you had to be careful. Emily Post in 1922 had a book called The Ladies and Gentlemen's Etiquette. Well, in this Bram Stoker's Dracula book, he expressed that the fears that included scientific growth, uh, female empowerment, homosexuality, foreign colonization, and um, some of those have come over into still America's society today. 
during the Victorian era, men and women searched for an ideal relationship uh, based on expectations of a demanding society. Victorian men also expected women to possess feminine qualities as well as innocence. Uh, otherwise, they would not be of marriage potential. So from infancy, all girls who were born above the poverty level had the dream of a successful marriage before their eyes, for by that alone was it possible for a woman to rise in the world. Uh, in Petrie's article, reference Petrie 180, he says, because women were denied the opportunity to work or take part in a man's world, they spent their formative years in preparation for marriage. They expected men to take care of them and provide for them, since they were unable to provide for themselves. Now when you visit this house, the Havel Beardsley House Museum, you will see a picture of one of their uh, children, uh, Rachel and Havel's child, uh, Sarah. She married well. She married B.L. Davenport. He was the first president of the National uh, Bank in Elkhart here. But just as men had expectations for the ideal Victorian woman, the women and the rest of society had expectations for the Victorian man. Ingrid Ranham's article discusses the modern Victorian language and the roles of both women and men. When discussing men and masculinity, she quotes scholar Tosh, John Tosh, and he says, becoming a man involved detaching oneself from the home and its feminine comforts and achieving a level of material success in a wider world, including the recognition of manhood by one's peers. Reference Ranum 242. In other words, men not only had to gain the women's respect before marriage, but they also had to impress the rest of society and their male gender. Men became victims of social pressures because their peers scrutinized their success. Michael Patrick Gillespie, the author of the picture of Victorian uh, Dorian Gray in the book, What the World Thinks of Me, he stated that throughout the 19th century, certain values, duty, responsibility, commercial success, middle-class morality, occupied a central position in the Victorian consciousness. Rest, uh, reference Gillespie 5. Victorian men were not only competing for the respect of their own sex, but they also needed to impress the women too. If they were not married, it depicted that they were not fully masculine because they did not have the family to support. Uh, supporting a family was a sign of true success uh, within the male sex. Well then, with all these rules, how did men and women flirt to date? So well, there was dances and there was balls. Uh, opportunity for young lovers to enjoy polite chit chat, although you had to be introduced by the host first. <laughs> so there was even rules to that. But this sedate style of romance wasn't everyone's taste. So at cer certain young women reported being, uh, began using their fans to transmit a rather racier message to their bows, like to say, I'm not amused. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> so uh, what did they do for fun? Well, there were sporting pastimes, such as cycling, rowing, horse racing was popular. Large crowds would often attend uh, sailing events like the Henley Regatta. Um, also famous horse races, such as Epsom Derby, uh, one of the largest events on the Victorian calendar was the famous Great Exhibition held in 1851. And we still do kind of things like that today, like they just had the Kentucky Derby. 
things like that. So things follow over into America from Britain and we still sometimes use some of these secret language things. One of them, eye flirtation. Now if you wink the right eye, we still have that today, don't we? That one, man, I love you. If you wink the left eye, oh, I hate you. <laughs> well, if you raised both eyes, well, you know, kiss me. <laughs> And we still do that one today. <laughs> Dining had its etiquette also. Drawing a napkin or a handkerchief through the hand was I desire a conversation with you. Or holding it by the corners, it is agreeable. Playing with the fork, um, I have something to tell you. Holding the knife and fork in each hand, when can I see you? So the hands, uh, some, there's a saying, uh, some say that they are heavy handed, but the Victorians, they had a penchant for symbolism and hidden meaning, jewelry and accessories and more. So let me show you just a few over here. Again. <laughs> the book flirtation. Holding the book upside down. Do you love me? Placing it on the right shoulder. Yes. <laughs> Holding it on the left shoulder. No. <laughs> Johansson here, this movie's called A Good Woman in 2004, 
by Mark Barger, uh, directed by Henry Chu, shows off her interplay with the band. So speaking of band, here are some things that they did for a flirtation. Carry me in the right hand in front of the face. Carry me in the left hand in front of the face. I wish we could get closer. <laughs> Placing it on the right ear. Do a half turn. Twirling it in the left hand. Then she get rid of you. Twirling <laughs> 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 it in the right hand. I love you. Who remembers all that? The men would. <laughs> Not only uh, fanology uh, was a secret language that you would uh, learn, but gemstones was another way. Um, PDA, public display of affection, and no, that was a no. <laughs> Going to a man's house, no, that did not happen either. So, but you could bestow upon a lady constant attention uh, to show her, yes, I'm very interested. And this would come in gifts of, say, a ring with a picture of the loved one inside. You would have a lock of your hair from your loved one. Jewels, um, all the kind of jewels you had. Like if you wanted to show our due regard to, you would get like a ruby or an emerald. And you would put it on the string. Each gem meant something. Uh, antique brooch exec executed in simultaneous stones arranged in an acrostic pattern symbolized regard and appropriately framed in ivy symbolized friendship. Now, if you don't know what acrostic means, Edgar Allan Poe uh, wrote a, a poem entitled Elizabeth where the name Elizabeth, each letter spelled out something she would write on the, the next line showing her. Handkerchief or another. Did you drop the handkerchief in front of the man? Well, I'd like to get your attention so I can just pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> and also immediately an opportunity to talk to you. The next one civilized cards. Uh, now, this had a lot of labor involved, and they were quite cute. And some of the men would uh, introduce themselves. It was a, a way of breaking the ice, starting a conversation. Some would have little pictures like an eye for I, and then do you, a P, and a U, and then your home, and then a year. You know, she would hold it and give her the card. Which then they were so little, she could discreetly then put it in her little handbag, none the way of she. <laughs> Parasols also uh, had their own. This is from Japan. My mom was a world traveler, so she brought this back from Japan for me. Carrying it elevated over your left hand, desiring acquaintance, carrying it elevated over your right hand. You're too willing. <laughs> Carrying it close in your left hand by your side. Stop me. Carrying it in front of you. No more at present. Carrying it over your shoulder. You're too cruel. Closing it up. I wish I could see it. Gloves also had. Uh, a way as well. Uh, you could draw it to your hand, very discreet. You could touch it to your uh, ear. You really can't. <laughs> so you, they would use many things like this. But you, you think of why? Why all this secret language that was rude? But where did it get anybody? You know, you have the fans, you have the the book language, the, the jewelry and 
and all that. Well, you have to know where you came from to know where you're going. The history is important to know about these things because how are you going to continue your freedom if you don't know what you fought for? July 4th is coming up. Now, uh, America won its independence July 4th, 1776 from Britain. Many things have happened since then. Uh, in, in, um, let me show you some things. Lydia Cole, she was a lawyer. Although she could not go to court. She could not be seen in court. She was not allowed. She was a woman. So she wrote a quote. She said, if justice itself denies a woman what it naturally grants a man, how can we call it justice? And you can see that story in that. 1872 brought about the first woman to run for president was Victoria Woodhull, the Equal Rights Party nominee. Now there was a, a group of women because of the secret meetings, they could get together, they formed the blue stocking group. And they spoke, oh yeah, blue stocking group. Uh, but they fought for women's education. And it was not recognized, believe it or not, until the State Education Act in 1870 and 1902. <coughs> Married Women's Property Act, 1882 to 1892. This removed the husband's control over his wife's money. After World War I, in 1918, this allowed women over 30 to vote. Now, if you were 21, you had to wait till 1939. But as you can see, the point is it moved the progress for freedom along with it. So I want to, at this time, give you a message in time needed. I love you all. And thank you.